Hey friends, welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we are going to talk about sequencing parts and arranging songs with the Akai MPC-1. For those unfamiliar, MPC-1 is a standalone sampler and sequencer that does not require a PC. The unit has 16 velocity and pressure sensitive pads for creating beats, composing bass lines, and different melodies. From recording your initial tracks to the final mix down of your music, depending upon your workflow, you have the potential to do it all on the MPC-1. And again, I say the potential to do it all. Now, it's important to note that MPC-1's workflow is not the same as your basic digital audio workstation or DAW software applications. In most DAWs, each track uses an instant of each instrument, and all the tracks are always playing even if they don't contain any audio or MIDI data. Also, your entire project needs to be arranged just as the final mix down or final production would be. Now, this isn't the case with MPC-1, which offers much more flexibility in your project. While some may associate MPC-1 primarily with rap, techno, and hip-hop song production, it's important to stress that the power of its sequencing and arranging features are also great for producing pop, rock, R&B, and other genres as well. Now, depending upon your specific workflow, it can be difficult to arrange music and or learn how to do that well especially if you're used to recording your music in a linear fashion. In this presentation, we're going to examine how to sequence parts and arrange a song on the MPC-1. For decades, I used the Alesis MMT-8 to record song sequences in parts. Like for instance, I'd record the first verse as a part, the chorus as another part separately, and so on until I have all of the parts of the song recorded individually. From there, I would piece together or connect all of the recorded parts in the order I wanted, which would then become an arrangement. I could then create several different combinations or versions of those sequence parts to see which one worked best. Now afterwards, I would transfer one or more sequence versions to an external multi-track recorder to add vocals and other audio tracks for the final mix down. MPC-1 allows me to continue with my preferred workflow, and that's what's important. This process allows for different sequence arrangements for live performances, extended versions of a song, demos, and much more. Let's check out how to configure and record a sequence on the MPC-1. On the Akai MPC-1, a sequence is a building block of a song. A sequence contains multiple tracks that play at the same time like a doll. There are different methods of recording sequences on the MPC-1, so keep that in mind, but as stated previously, MPC-1 Projects allows users to create separate sequences for verses, choruses, bridges in a song, and more. A project can contain 128 sequences. In this presentation, we're going to focus on my workflow for recording sequence parts. We'll be sequencing the drum tracks for my song using my Alesis Strike Drum Module via a USB MIDI connection. The unit also includes MIDI through its 5-pin DIN in and out ports, as well as a USB Type-A port. When using the USB Type-A port to connect your MIDI gear, the unit should recognize the connected gear on the MIDI sync screen. On the project screen, the sequence section shows the current sequence and its information. The sequence drop-down box is used to select a sequence. To edit the name of the sequence, tap the cursor icon on the right edge of the section and the virtual keyboard appears. Name your sequence part. 
My part is named intro, which of course is the song's introduction. Use the BPM field to adjust the tempo of your sequence. Now you can choose whether or not the sequence follows its own tempo, which is the sequence's internal, or should I say sectional tempo, or the master tempo. Tap the sequence master button under the BPM field, or you can press and hold the shift and tap buttons. Now, before recording a sequence parts, it's important that you understand how to configure the bars in your sequence. This is, this is really a big deal. In music, we know a bar or a measure is a single unit of time containing a specific number of beats played at a specific tempo. When building sequence parts on the MPC-1, keep in mind that they will later need to be connected to another sequence part to build your song. With this, they must flow seamlessly from one part to the next as if they were one or played all at one time. Now, it's critical to time your bars perfectly or the sequence changes and related timing and beat of your song will be off. To edit the sequence, tap the pencil icon on the right edge of the section. The sequence edit copy window will then open. Now in this screen, you can manage the bars. You can transpose the sequence, you can clear it, and much more. Now don't worry, we'll talk about this section in much more detail in a future presentation. To return to the main mode, tap cancel or the left arrow in the upper left corner of the screen. You can also just press the main button. Let's move on to the track section. The track section shows the current track, program type, along with its information. The track field shows the track number and name. To edit the name of the track, tap the cursor icon on the right edge of the section and then use the virtual keyboard. My first track is a MIDI track which is also a drum track using the Elisa Strike drum module. The program selector indicates the type of program through which the track is being routed. The specific program name is displayed below in the program section. You can use the program selector to change the program type and then select a specific program of that type in the program section below it. Since my track is a MIDI track, I selected the MIDI icon by tapping it to enable communications with my Alesis Strike on MIDI program channel 1. The length field sets how long the track is in beats. If you select the minimum value, the track will be the exact same length as its sequence. Now, here's a point of note. You can have tracks with different lengths, which is very cool and <laughs> very necessary at times. For example, you could play a one bar drum sequence repeatedly under a four bar bass line. Let's move on. The velocity field is uh, what you would set to how loudly or quietly a track plays relative to its recorded levels. When set to 50%, the track will be played with half its velocity it was originally uh, recorded with. When set to 200%, the track will play twice as loud. The maximum ve velocity level is 127. The MIDI channel or MIDI CH field sets the MIDI channel that the plugin or MIDI program uses. Now mine is set to one, which is the same MIDI channel that my Alesis Strike is set to. Tap the record arm button to record enable the track. Now begin MIDI sequence recording. The MIDI events will be recorded to this track. Simultaneously press the shift and save buttons to save the project. Create new sequences and repeat these steps to record your external MIDI keyboards,
drum machines, and more. Remember to change the channel numbers for each device accordingly. Let's now build a song arrangement using our recorded sequences. Song mode allows users to arrange different sequences, such as verses, choruses, solos, etc., to build a song. Now, each song can have up to 999 steps or stages, in which a sequence can play one or more times. Each project can store up to 32 songs. To enter song mode, first be sure that playback is stopped and then press the menu button. Then tap song to enter song mode. Each previously created sequence in the project is assigned to a pad. The sequence playlist is to the left of the pads and this shows the song's current sequence flow. When a song plays, it moves through each step of the sequence playlist. Each step contains an assigned sequence. Now with this, each step can be repeated, which is determined by the value in the repeat column. Under the repeat icon, a value of 1 means that the sequence will play through only once. The bars column to the right indicates the length of that sequence. Now keep in mind that each step can be set to play its sequence at an independent tempo, which is determined by the value in the BPM column. Now finally, let's build and arrange a song. To insert a step at the current position, tap Insert. To delete the currently selected step, tap Delete. Simple enough, right? To set which sequence plays for a step, tap the Step Sequence field and then turn the data dial to select the sequence that you want. To set how many times a sequence repeats, tap the Steps Repeat field, which is next to the sequence name, and then turn the data dial to select the number you want. Repeat these steps until you have all the parts of your song in the order you desire. Then simultaneously press the Shift and Save buttons to save the project. Well, friends, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also leave a comment in the comment section and let us know what you think about this content. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. While you're here, check out some of the other videos, listen to the music, and especially the playlists because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really do appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you soon.